In the first minute of the debutante ball car, we see the two faces of Simon. Whatever. Battle scars give a man character. Here, he is relishing in his militaristic fantasy tropes of what constitutes a compelling warrior, full of pride and horribly misguided idealism. Then, when Grace, in an attempt to get Simon to take it easy on Hazel and her attachment to Tuba, brings up an event from Simon's past, his demeanor completely shifts. The boy falls apart. I mean, when you first got on the train in that null of yours... <clears throat> Anyway... Look at that wounded and insecure body language from Simon. Merely mentioning that formative life event triggers this involuntary reaction in him. The incident involving the cat seemingly left him with legitimate post-traumatic stress disorder, and he just shuts down when he has to think about it. Something interesting to note is that, in this moment, that unresolved trauma is interfering with Simon's ability to empathize. Grace is asking Simon to consider Hazel's situation. She's asking Simon to recall the sense of attachment he had toward his Null, and then apply that to Hazel with the consideration that she's even younger. That's a request for empathy. For Grace, who is a skilled emotional manipulator, it's easy to see from the perspectives of others and analyze their mental states. The problem, of course, is that Grace uses her empathy as a tool to control people, She's mulling over Hazel's circumstances because she's fishing for the most efficient way to convert Hazel into one of the Apex. And we could lose Hazel if we attack it. She's too attached. Grace has a controlled and detached form of empathy. She extends her empathy as a bridge to understand Hazel better, but that understanding is for the purposes of manipulating and using Hazel. And as vile as that is, it is still technically empathy. It's still being able to place yourself temporarily into the shoes of another. Doing this seems to come fairly naturally to Grace, and as we see over multiple episodes, it's the reason why Hazel is able to worm her way into Grace's heart so much. Simon is incapable of extending such empathy, even for ulterior motives. When Grace looks at Hazel, she sees Simon. When Simon looks at Hazel, he sees... nothing. He's looking through her toward the end goal of expanding the influence of the Apex. So yeah, that was all characterization and context this episode provided, merely in its first introductory minute. Infinity Drain is such a good show, I swear. Why are more people not watching it? So, back to Simon. While he fails at caring about other people, Simon is capable of painting a solid and compelling mythos that appeals to Hazel, something that writing fantasy novels probably helped him with. This allows Hazel to channel antagonism toward a vague and nebulous enemy. It creates an other for her to be in opposition to. <gasps> I hate 1-1! One -one. Where do the children go? No one knows. That's an interesting reply, because we don't really know exactly what Simon and Grace do think happens. If we recall a conversation from the episode The Wasteland in Book 2... I can't believe he took the exit. He was weak. He wasn't weak, he was misled. But he- we just lost another human, Simon. Have some respect. Based on how they kind of skirt around the subject, it's almost like the two of them try not to think too hard about what happens to you after you leave. They see exit from the train as a loss for the Apex, and therefore it's bad, end of story. It's like the two of them think the subject doesn't even deserve further consideration beyond the fact that it's antithetical to growing the Apex. At least that's the impression I get. Feel free to share yours in the comments. Don't be a worry, baby. No need to hurry, baby, when you're with me. After watching episode 5, hearing this song just hurts. It hurts, man. I'm like, I'm nearly tearing up just thinking about it. But yeah, so we learn this episode that Tuba had kids that probably met some tragic end. I am on my own now. Nuh-uh, you're with us. We see that, for all the caretaking Tuba provides for Hazel, she also relies on Hazel for her own emotional support. Hazel is Tuba's rock as much as Tuba is Hazel's rock. 
Okay, so I'm cutting in here because this review was recorded before episode 6 was out, and now that episode 6 is out, that rock stuff I said, it's way harder. Jesus Christ, fuck episode 6, oh my god. Okay, so let's finally get to when our characters actually enter the debutante ball car. And due to the presence of Hazel and Tuba, Simon and Grace can't just start ransacking the place and ripping apart passengers like they normally would the moment that they lack access to a door. We'll play along for Hazel's sake. Uh... The two child cult leaders have to behave, to put it bluntly. They're forced to abide by the train's intent, which is something they're not at all used to. For us, the audience watching Infinity Train, a new themed car usually feels like a new set of gimmicks and hijinks the characters have to acclimate to. For Grace and Simon, they've conditioned themselves to see it as a life-threatening hazard. Hey! You can't leave us in here! I looked for a way out of the building and... Grace, there's literally nothing out there. It's just a black void. Oh no, Simon. Now you'll have to learn a dance. The horror. By the way, Grace's face when Hazel interrupts her was priceless. Ceiling panels might budge. I'll take lead, you go and- Let's land the dance! Just look at that scowl. Look at how much she's grimacing. Look at how much disdain she has to stomach when somebody takes a front to the leader of the Apex. Followed by that 180 on the flip of a switch. Hazel, you are so sweet! Grace's attempt to take charge by levying her power as somebody older with more experience fails when Tuba is there. It is smart to try what we know can work. The Hazel-Tuba combo is like a one-two punch against most of the attempts Grace and Simon employ to spread their ideology. Hazel has the childhood naivete to bluntly question and state whatever is on her mind, while Tuba has the knowledge to challenge Grace and Simon whenever it seems they are getting too shady, as well as the raw physical power to make her challenges feel substantial and worthy of respect. It's a really cool dynamic. These gnolls are a bigger threat than they seemed. They always are. While that was a secret yet not so subtle dig at Tuba, it was also Grace technically admitting that Tuba is a formidable opponent in the marketplace of Hazel's child mind. In the end, what ultimately allows the dance to proceed is Grace's appreciation of how dedicated Hazel is. If we don't dance, we can't get back to the apex, and we have to, so I can be in it! On one hand, it seems like Grace gives in because she wants to keep fueling Hazel's excitement for the Apex, to reinforce the passion Hazel obtained at the start of the episode. Yeah, maybe someday. Someday. I feel like that was secondary, though. The cinematic language of the scene reads that Grace is having a genuine, heartfelt connection with Hazel in this moment. She's developing a legitimate fondness for the girl. I can be special and brave. I promise. Grace wanted to see Hazel happy. I think that's the primary subconscious reason for why Grace decides to abide by the train's rules. This fondness, this affection that may now exceed low-key, is also what allows Grace to be open and share some of her backstory, although Hazel's grief about not knowing who her parents are also helped facilitate that window of vulnerability. We learn that Grace came from a well-off family that could afford various renowned private dance instructors, and that Grace's parents likely lacked sufficient time to spend with their daughter, exemplified by her parents not being able to attend the one time Grace was in a recital. From all this info, we can assume Grace was probably homeschooled as well. She never really got to interact with other kids, and thus grew up lonely, which Hazel acutely picks up on. It's okay. I don't know any other kids either. <laughs> Knowing Grace's backstory, we can now piece together that she developed her social butterfly persona after boarding the train. To escape the loneliness she once felt, Grace surrounded herself with people who will follow her and adore her. Her ability to converse with others, to smooth talk, to verbally manipulate, that must have been growing as her number was growing. 
And now, in the present time, as leader of the Apex, she mandates obligatory gifts from her subjects after every raid as a representation of the affection and devotion the cult members have for her. So that's an interesting character trajectory. So all the dance stuff happens, and it was all great. Living ornaments, a la Beauty and the Beast, aristocratic Cthulian people, neat. The outfits of our characters were, of course, mwah. I really don't have much to say in regards to the dance itself, so let's move on to the ending of this episode. Hazel earns her sine wave marking, <laughs> and Simon and Grace use this moment to other tuba from Hazel, under the guise that only kids can wear such a marking. Can I just point out that Grace and Simon still self-identify as kids? I'm pretty sure they're around 17 or 18, right on the cusp of adulthood by societal standards, yet they definitely don't ever want to identify as adults. They don't ever want to grow up. It's a Peter Pan and the Lost Boys sort of situation, with a child cult on an interdimensional train. So as the episode draws to a close, Tuba is feeling left out of the group, and Simon is being Simon. He's trying to yet again figuratively and literally wedge himself between a person and their null companion, just as he did in the mall car to get Lake away from Jesse. We'll be discussing that topic in regards to Simon a lot more in the review of the next episode. Hey, why don't you teach me that cute song you were singing earlier? Okay! Let me brainstorm something real quick based off Simon getting Hazel to teach him that song. Can you imagine if Simon hums this tune in the finale while he is doing something supremely horrible? I need that! I need maximum level scumbag Simon! That would be so uncomfortably dark, and if it happens, I'm gonna lose my shit! The closing scene of this episode is Grace looking over at Tuba's gloomy expression and feeling conflicted herself. Grace's expression is a complicated cocktail of emotions, and please feel free to dig into gritty personal interpretations in the comment section. But one emotion I know for sure is there, whether Grace realizes it or not, is some low-key empathy for a denizen of the train. It was a pitch-perfect closer to a spectacular episode. I genuinely think this show is beyond amazing. So much is packed into each episode, there are so many layers and subtleties to all the character interactions, and thematically Infinity Train fires on all cylinders. I'm having a blast making these reviews, although they are taking up quite a substantial amount of time. If you want to help support my video making ventures, please check out my Patreon and throw some coins my way. I would appreciate it more than I'm able to verbalize. Thank you, and see you in the next review.